I'm Dave Berkus, and this is Eye on Business and the Berkus Report. Each time we talk about two or three stories, each with a moral or an insight or a real story about entrepreneurs that have done well or failed badly. And I think every one of them will be interesting for you. So let's try one or two of them today and see how we do. The first one is one that comes back from my very distant past. Turns out that uh, I ran a record company in Hollywood years ago, and we had a manufacturing plant with uh, a number of employees who worked the first shift and more that worked the second shift. And one day, an employee came back after his shift, and he had a bag, a plastic bag, full of, it appeared to be, cameras and things. And out of curiosity, as I was wandering the plant, I kind of looked at what he was doing, and he turned out to be selling merchandise that he had stolen. His name was Bobby. Bobby was the most popular pressman in the entire company. Everybody loved Bobby. And here I was, the CEO, confronting Bobby in the plant in front of all of his friends. What would you do? Well, I fired him on the spot. One of the more difficult firings that I ever had. But you know, I think all the employees understood and got the message. And the message really is, you are your company or your family's moral compass. And there are times you do things that you really don't want to do, but times that they really make a difference when you do. Well, that's the first one. Here's another one. A man named Steve Street came to our group, the Tech Coast Angels, way back in the year 2000. And he had an idea, and the idea was, I think, one that uh, you'll resonate with. Back in 2000, it was difficult, if you didn't have a credit card, to be able to charge on the Internet. So he figured that if he could find a way of creating a card to charge on the Internet, he'd be able to buy things from Amazon and other suppliers. And so Steve created what turned out to be a charge card because he had a friend at MasterCard who let him use the MasterCard name as a, uh, uh, a license for use. And Steve created a debit card. Now that seems like something we all understand today, but in fact, it was the first time there ever had been a debit card. No banks had yet done that at all. And he thought it was to charge for things on the internet. Well, you might guess that what the debit card turned out to be is what you know it to be today. It is the banking system for the unbankable. And what Steve ended up doing was creating an entire industry. And so the company you'll recognize perhaps as Green Dot, 75,000 stores all over the United States, including all the Walmarts. And yet this idea began as a simple idea about how to charge for Internet purchases. Well, there's a lesson there, too. And the lesson is management company trumps a quality plan. Things will change. No business plan ever survives any time that it finds the marketplace and it finds its niche in the marketplace. Well, Steve Street created a company that uh, I was lucky to be a large investor in, had a public offering several years ago. I was a large part of that public offering, and I thank Steve every day for all that he gave us. But then again, we all thank Steve for having created an industry that now is emulated by banks and by debit card companies all over the country. One more story, if we have time today. This is one that comes out of my own lifetime from the past. I had created software for the hotel industry, and I had a company that had about 233 employees. The company's name was Computerized Lodging System, and Computerized Lodging Systems created software that many of the individual hotels were using, but at the time, very few chains. And at one of the trade shows way back when, I was lucky enough to spend about an hour and a half in the booth with the head of uh, uh, communications for Marriott and for the CIO of Sheridan, both separately. And both of them were impressed enough to send several employees to my office uh, within the next week or two. And what happened was, each time we had those employees come, they would spend a day or two, and they'd leave me with a list, a list that would have as many as 100 to 125 things that they thought were deficient in the software. Now, maybe they were thinking that they could do away with me easily by giving me a list that long. I asked each of them, in turn, to stay over the weekend. And both of the groups did in their own time. And the first group came back, and the Sheridan group, which was the first group, then looked at the software as it was Friday, and it was Monday morning when they came back. And I had reprogrammed the system and taken care of probably 70 to 80 percent of all of the things that they had asked for. The uh, moral there is that sometimes you need to teach your customer. Because what I did in being able to make those changes gave me an account that turned out to be a national account of significant size. The same thing happened again with the Marriott chain in almost exactly the same way. And that was a reputation that I got in the industry. 
And it really is something when you can say that you have a teacher customer able to do all those things. By the way, you wonder how you can make that many changes to a program. And the answer is a really good one. In fact, I got a reputation for making too many changes too fast. The hotel that I use to make these changes ordinarily in the marketplace instead of just uh, theoretically in our own office was a hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the airport. And every weekend I would fly out to Tulsa, Oklahoma on a Friday and program day and night until Sunday afternoon when the flight back to Los Angeles, which was my home base, took off. And they would drive me from the hotel to make the flight just in time to close a clamshell door. Now it's kind of quaint today because of course we have to go through long lines and long line is the TSA, but I did that and it was a lot of fun. And invariably, when I got home, there was a message waiting for me from the hotel. And the message was, you screwed up, there's something wrong, and I would have to get onto a modem and fix what I had broken. And so the reputation in the industry was, for Dave, wheels up, system down. And so it turns out that there is a plus and a minus to making these rapid changes, but the rapid changes bring you customers you might not have had otherwise. And the moral there is, find your teacher customer and let that teacher customer help you make a better product. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Ion Business.